Pairing genetic mutations with Reggie's playstyle makes me a little scared as to what the end result is going to be here. Warhammer Total War 3 is a game where you can socialize with your neighbors, build lasting socialize. relationships, oh and my undertake God. extreme <laughs> renovation projects. In this expansive fantasy setting, there are dozens uh, of races squigs. to choose from, and any choice is perfectly acceptable as long as it's Clan Molder. Why? Because Clan Molder yes, is the only Mulder. faction that allows you to lobotomize your own soldiers and genetically modify Seeing this get introduced in one of the DLCs for Warhammer 2, uh, I watched Mandalore Gaming's video on it. It was really cool to, to see this kind of new tech tree pop up. Although the, the elf twins that got introduced in that same pack were not as impressive. I've heard they've been fixed up now though. Modify them so extensively that they turn into a writhing tower of flesh which is simply too ugly to die. Today we will- Too horrible to die? Is that actually like a status that they can have? Or was that an edit from Reggie? will utilize the power of gene splicing along oh with a complete God. disregard for side effects to create the ultimate life form Explosive and conquer our enemies. Is that a Hydra rat? What? <laughs> I didn't see that in the DLC video. <laughs> whoa, whoa. But first, a word from our sponsor. GamerSupps is a company of which course. sells some of the finest G -G. legal energy supplements Emotional in the world. Flavor? But perhaps oh, even hell greater yeah. than that is their relentless oh assault on your ability to be a normal person. <laughs> because they have invested tens of thousands of dollars into the science of sexualizing plastic cups. Nothing and no one is safe from their reach, but we might be able to take control. Use code REGGIE for 10% off, and if we buy enough products, maybe, just maybe, they'll let me design my own totally platonic and safe for work cup. Thank you, Gamer Supps. Now back to the video. Welcome to the snow covered oh, yeah. wastelands of a place which is called Kislev, but which we all know is simply Eastern Europe. True to form, these tundras are Basically. inhabited exclusively by 17th century Russian nobility and recently paroled sex offenders. As such, <laughs> <laughs> the man's grin really doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a great edit. Its main exports are bad haircuts, class warfare, Ooh. and uncomfortable conversations. <laughs> to me. But perhaps the greatest oh, downside no. to living in Kislev is that every battle appears to be taking place inside of a used toilet bowl. However, <laughs> that's exactly the kind of environment you'd expect someone named Throt the Unclean to thrive yeah, in. Yeah. And thrive we will. Our goal is to transcend the weakness of our genetics by responsibly using science to ethically create the perfect organism. The only issue is that the more we edit our chromosomes, the greater our risk of developing this un Oh, okay, there's the risk meter. I had asked in Mandalore's video where you could see this or like what the numbers were. But yeah, okay, it's right there displayed. So so the more you put on, the higher the chance the genetic mutation just absolutely fails and it becomes a, a freak of nature. Although, from what I remember, it could actually end up being a good thing or just straight up kill the thing unfortunate condition called genetic instability. It's a pretty mild disorder. Your chance of survival is about the same as getting shot in the head, because the main symptom of this condition is immediate and rapid physical disintegration. Yikes. And if you take it too far, genetic instability turns into explosive instability, which causes your anatomy to detonate on contact with the enemy. We could work on a cure, or we could just push you down a garbage chute and try again, because by pressing- It creates a unique game plan, right? Like, oh, well, I messed up on the genetic mutation for this unit, but we could definitely use you in this next battle, you know? So it kind of works out. Pressing this button, we can literally recycle you. This is done through the use of the growth vat. You can think of it like a compost oh, pile them. for people. You I'm know. going to try to make a unit <laughs> with the maximal amount of genetic modifications, and according to my calculations, the chance of doing that successfully is approximately 0.03%. So, you know, oh. we're going to be doing a lot of recycling. I well, yeah, but I'm sure you're gonna achieve that somehow in this video, aren't you, Reggie? Because that's just what you do. But before we can spit in the face of statisticians everywhere, we need a plan to expand our empire. And when it comes to plans, there's nothing a rat loves more than a little cheese. The first step is to go south and capture this settlement. We engaged in a close battle, but thanks to my tactical brilliance, I managed to kill almost everyone in my army on turn one. <laughs> <by sk> <laughs> Well, that's not where I expected that line to go, but it works out. Even standards, this is considered very impressive. Following yeah. this, we spent five turns converting the entire population of Fort Stragov directly into food. The legality of this maneuver is up for debate, but when you physically eh. consume the victim, witnesses, and all evidence of a crime, so I think you're to in the clear. It's around this yeah. time a man displaying every known symptom of the bubonic plague will declare war on you. That guy. I watched uh, Mandalore's Warhammer 3 review, 
And he looks so much better in his cinematics than he does in game. I, I don't really know what's going on there. But it is a little unfortunate that his conflict with uh, the Ice Queen isn't really very interesting. Maybe they've already fleshed it out by now, but yeah, that's my understanding of it. But you can ignore that and instead focus on speedrunning homelessness by traveling to your capital city, demolishing it, and resettling it on the next turn, using all of your stockpiled food to rebuild it at level 4. Now I know you're thinking, but Reggie, won't your population Why? enter a profound state of starvation since you've used your entire food supply on a fancy building? The answer is yes, but also, I don't care, because by turn 10, we will have access to late game units such as rat hydras, and we're going to need them rat because hydras. Serena just declared war on us, and after carefully inspecting this balance of power, I've concluded that mm. to be very concerning. So what- <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the reason why you would destroy your own capital was because you could instantly spend food to rebuild it at a much higher level, rather than maybe like going through the process of waiting several turns for it to upgrade. Maybe that's the, the play there, but I could be wrong. I don't really know the full mechanics of this faction. What we're going to do is isolate ourselves inside Hell Pit for five turns and re-emerge with a slightly unfair army. As I waited slightly. over the turns, I began to grow worried because we were quickly becoming surrounded by a horde of angry Russian Gopniks who wanted nothing more than to redistribute my wealth. Maybe spending the first ten turns killing my own army, demolishing my capital city, and starving my population wasn't such yeah. a good idea. Speaking of bad ideas, Serena decided to channel the spirit of communism by death marching her army straight into my capital city three times in a row. Normally, this wow. battle would be somewhat challenging. However, my tier 4 garrison is actually better than either of our armies, so it oh. was fairly easy. Enjoy this moment. Ah, well, maybe that was the play. Now you have the tier 4 garrison to help defend your capital, instead of just a, a tier 1, which I'm assuming you would start with. Well, it lasts because it will probably be the only time we achieve anything other than a Pyrrhic victory in this entire campaign. With the Ice Queen fended off, we emerged from our chrysalis, now armed with catapults, flamethrowers, and plenty of these bad boys. They might not look like much, but with a little genetic modification, we can give them the cellular instability perk. If you're having trouble bit. killing any given unit, simply activate this ability and you'll find the fight a lot easier when your enemy is missing most of their limbs. With the power of quadruped suicide bombers, we were able to expand outward, even completing this quest battle and acquiring Gorich, a unique hero who is 12 parts anabolic steroid to one part everything else. I don't think this I can properly explain just how violently this before. man would kill you, but if you can imagine being pulled apart by meat hooks, there then it you're is. on the right track. After a few more turns, we managed to gain some territory, but we were in a difficult situation. To our left was the spokesperson for radiation poisoning, and to our right <laughs> was an AI doing their best impression of Joseph Stalin. So I bought some cannons for the second army and sent it to defend the western front. Meanwhile, Throt engaged in various battles to the south, including this one, which was not fun, because despite having access to several powerful units, there is a resource which is fundamentally inaccessible to us, and that resource is leadership. In fact, every Skaven yeah. battle has two Skaven's distinct phases. Just... Phase 1, where you actually play the game, and Phase 2, where you spend 90% of your time scanning the periphery of the map <laughs> in an attempt to stop your units from deserting you at the slightest conceivable inconvenience. That would seem uh, kind of annoying, yeah, yeah. You just have to constantly try and find your rats where they're hiding, where they're running off to, and tell them to get back into the fight. As opposed to, like, the Lizardmen, who just go absolutely berserk and try to kill everything around them. Which, uh, eh, I guess depending on the situation, but overall, the, the rats would be in a better place since they can, you know, heal up and, like, actually come back and rally and win the battle, whereas your Lizardmen would probably just go in and die. But the micromanagement you would have to do for the Skaven would be much more, I would think. Compounding this issue is the fact that Kislev units are objectively monotonous to fight against, because each and every one of them is experiencing a crippling identity crisis where yeah, they can't decide units. if they want to crush you with a mace or shoot you in both. the neck with a flintlock pistol. This makes them supremely unsatisfying to interact with because it feels like every unit just does the same thing. If we liken a diverse army such as this to a delicious and well-decorated cake with various flavors, then the Kislev army is that same cake after it has been beaten with a sledgehammer to the point of becoming a homogenous sludge. Seemingly, the only units that don't struggle with this brand of dysphoria are the polar bears that will inevitably flank you and rip out your carotid artery. <laughs> I guess that was an issue that was brought up. Like, being a hybrid unit makes it easier for like newcomers to, to pilot them, since, you know, they could do whatever they need to given the situation. And I feel like it's thematic because of the environment that they live in. 
having to adapt or die. But considering it from a gameplay perspective, yeah, I could see it being a bit of a, a drag to play against them. Which is a nice touch, but I just wish that having a large mammal violently chew through my neck veins wasn't considered the highlight of my day. So to conclude my unsolicited review of the Kislev race, I give them a 1 out of 10. Regardless, winning these battles put us in a very strong position because we're now within striking distance of the capital city of all of these godless sodomites. Soon, Ratkind will prevail. However, things weren't going so good on the western front. Leukemia Man decided to attack my second <laughs> army. The auto-resolve thinks we're going to lose, but when you're playing uh, Skaven, the accuracy of auto-resolve is about on par with the accuracy of a schizophrenic witch doctor who is covered in chicken blood, so I thought I could take him, but... I was horribly wrong. Because after approximately uh -oh. three minutes of fighting, my Skaven slaves were being violently domesticated. Fucking slaves, get your ass back here! <laughs> my no. cannons had been flanked by snow leopards, and my archers Yikes. were doing this. Moments like these remind me that my personal battle against autism is not going very well. So, the Great Orthodoxy made a generous contribution to population control on our behalf, but that's okay because- A generous contribution to population control. How does Reggie come up with these lines? As fast as you can kill my armies, I can make three more. By this point, we have managed to completely hey, isolate Kislev and drain Skaven most way. of its resources. All that's left now is to hire a warlock engineer, run him over to Kislev, and use this ability to produce an earthquake oh. that will destroy most of their walls. You know it's what? a good earthquake too, because the engineer dies in the process. Following oh. this, <laughs> Throck besieged the settlement and started starving them out. Once they were looking particularly anemic, we completed an auto-resolve and Kislev was officially ours. Nice. Now unrestrained by our abusive alcoholic nature, Neighbors, I gazed upon the world map to see what diplomatic opportunities await, and I quickly diplomatic realized that everyone who isn't a disfigured abomination absolutely hates us. But that being said, we did have some friends, and they started pushing south into Empire territory. The Empire, even in its incomplete form, is strength rank 2, and I want absolutely Holy. nothing to do with that. So instead, yeah. we traveled northeast and started bullying Jesus. this guy for looking like a fucking idiot. This man <laughs> looks like a child, and as it turns out, he has roughly the same combat effectiveness, because when I uh... shot him with a Cannon, he stopped moving. Now it's. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you put it like that, pretty sure everybody has the same combat effectiveness. I don't really know what the the third kiss of leader is doing. He's not even a part of that conflict. He just is like, oh, I can maybe help you, and then again, boss from helping you. I don't know. It's a strange system. It's been about 10 turns since I've done anything extraordinarily stupid, so I decided to change that by purchasing the Clone Warfare Doctrine, which makes all of my Skaven slaves acquire three random mutations. Depending on how nice. successfully they mutate, they will either gain superpowers, or their bodies will start violently self-destructing. This is objectively bad, but also mildly entertaining. Following yes. this, and perhaps because of Why it, the you? Empire decided it was time to perform a late-stage abortion on us using the medically correct oh device known as a mortar battery. With war declared, I shifted my attention south to find five Empire armies absolutely salivating at the thought of bashing my head in. I needed to equalize the numbers, but money was tight, so I just recruited two yeah. full armies of Skaven slaves. The plan is to use them to literally absorb all the enemy's ammunition and then tire them out in melee combat. That's and before it. you ask, I no, I don't feel bad, because if they didn't want this to happen, they shouldn't have put the phrase expendable meat shield on their resume. With our What the? Well, I guess... The game knows it. The slaves know it. We all know it. You were born in life to do this one thing, so you might as well do it well. Preparations now complete, we entered into an absolutely massive battle against the humans, with each side deploying five full armies for a total of over 7,000 people. Victory here could secure us a path into the Empire, and defeat would probably set us back about 20 turns. So here's the plan. Step 1. Use my failed science experiments to physically disgust the opponent. Step 2. Create a formation of people that actually matter atop of this hill, and use my poison wind mortars to harass the enemy on approach. Step 3. Mm. Have a panic attack from trying to manage 4,000 units. And then the most important <laughs> step of all, step 4. Locate the enemy leadership and right-click on them with Gorich. After about 30 seconds of socializing with Gorich, the enemy heroes display a strong proclivity towards bleeding to death. The battle unfolded and it was utterly gruesome. Within two minutes, the hill we were holding Gorich looked either. closer to a mass grave than an active battlefield, with wave after wave of humans crashing against our line, only to be enveloped by a horde of rats and eaten alive. Every so often, they would deploy some mortars to try to bombard 
guard us, at which point I'd use my rat ogres to absolutely flatten them. It was like watching a truck no, crash into an run. occupied hospital Ooh. bed. Overall, the lines were holding well, and God. eventually, after 15 minutes of fighting, the day was ours. Sure, every single Skaven slave died, but most of them were so terminally ill that this whole thing could probably be considered an elaborate form of euthanasia. The combined <laughs> casualties came out to about 4,000, which caused the Empire to drop from rank 2 to 17, and we went from rank 14 to 45. Yikes! Feel nice. Definitely feel like a winner now. Definitely a win, battle, yeah. Throt was able to plow deep into Empire territory, expanding our borders like an errant stream of piss. This caused just about every human in existence to declare war on me. If I focused my entire military in this region, I might be able to hold the lines, but the issue was that this deranged proto-human was still alive and destroying my settlements to the north. Oh, I redirected no. two armies to deal with him and eventually managed to trick him into leaving his capital city, which I then attacked. If we use the auto battler, we'll probably lose, and that's because using the auto battler is a lot like smoking crystal meth out of the barrel of a loaded shotgun. It's convenient <laughs> and exciting, but sometimes just not worth the risk. So we did this yeah. fight manually yeah, and absolutely sometimes. decimated his garrison with our mortar teams. This was basically a death blow to his empire, and I found killing him so personally satisfying that I saved the replay so I could cherish and relive this moment forever. So let's regroup here. Our objective is to create the perfect life form, and I've tried. In fact, we're on the 11th generation Our of test judges. subjects. However, it's hard to justify spending valuable resources on a project with a 99% chance of giving my soldiers brain damage. So until we defeat the Empire, we're going to focus on just creating good soldiers rather than trying to brute force a perfect one. For example, okay. I worked out a rat ogre build where I replace all of their skin with mammoth hide, replace their blood with high octane gasoline, and force them to ingest a parasitic worm that causes them to become undead. This, along with a few other minor procedures, effectively turns Minor. them into unstoppable killing machines. With the Russians now defeated, we can hmm. focus these monsters entirely on the humans. The That's just so cool, the many different combinations that you can do. How you can fully, like, customize your army to fit your playstyle. Or maybe you could even, like, just have a thematic army. You know, just for the heck of it. It's, it's a great system. I, I really like what they did with that DLC. The campaign was going pretty well, and the whole experience reminded me why I love playing Skaven. The ridiculous contraptions and absurd strategies make you feel like a cartoon character, but with gore turned on. Not only is it possible for you to slowly no. flatten an elderly woman using a mobilized bell ah. you dislodged from a nearby <laughs> clock tower, it's actually one of the more normal things you can do. So needless to say, the Empire was feeling the pressure. So much so, that they ended up calling in their friends for help. And what fearsome allies did Carl rally against me? Well, a fucking tree and a short guy. I don't think Carl <laughs> has many friends, and he's about to have even oh, less no. because his barely animate companion just ran headfirst into an army of no. flamethrowers. Meanwhile, the dwarves actually killed one of my armies, which is really oh. unfortunate for them because now I have to introduce them to Rodney. With most uh -oh. units, there is some part that isn't dangerous, but with Rodney, everything will everything. kill you. He's covered in yeah. spikes, his entire body is swinging and gyrating around wildly, and if any part of him even touches you, it could best be likened oh. to being hit with a bag full of cinder blocks. So anyway, they died. After assimilating the resources of Carl's friends, our faction had become so powerful that beating him up was starting to feel like beating up someone with cerebral palsy. And as I'm sure you know, after a few minutes, that experience becomes very unrewarding. But I refused to let the I'm physically sure disabled know. rob me of the and joy of all. victory. So I decided to fire another bullet into this still twitching corpse of morality by spending a thousand gold to develop biological weapons, which I then deployed in Carl's capital city. This was not tactically necessary, but it was kind of fun. I enjoyed watching it spread through his territory, decimating his economy, and slowly decomposing all of his armies. The play Damn, dude. You just play Skaven to be a little shit, don't you? <laughs> we just do a little bit of trolling here and there. Yeah, just mess with you. I did it because it was funny, dude. <laughs> Nothing personal, kid. The plague was so virulent that it even started killing the French, which caused them to declare war on me. I viewed this as a win-win scenario. I had fun watching Carl writhe around on the ground like some kind of dying centipede, but I decided it was time to put him out of his misery. I went to Altdorf, sacked it for 30,000 gold, and then settled it as a level 1 Skaven city. That's a pretty humiliating way to lose your capital city, and Skaven I wouldn't be surprised city? to see a yeah. notification about Carl Franz dying of a drug overdose on the next turn. With the old Poor world guy. now under our control, I began pumping my soul 
soldiers full of mutagens, hoping that even one of them would transform into something other than a burden to society. The next 20 turns consisted of slaughtering the French, growing new monsters in a petri dish, and having a member of the Chinese mafia try to extort me for 3,000 gold. <laughs> I said no, he said I'll kill you, and then I pointed out he's 3,000 miles away, checkmate Jackie Chan. Just to prove a point, I also decided to ambush one of his trade caravans, which was carrying oh, no. 11,000 gold. I know the sight of me grabbing a civilian's head and slowly crushing it with my bare hands looks bad, but it's actually okay because these people are communists, and what they need most of all <laughs> is freedom. And, as an advocate of freedom, oh I am morally obligated to extend to them the compassionate hand of freedom by balling it up into a fist freedom. and punching them in the face with it repeatedly until they submit and conform to my political ideologies, which is a roundabout way of saying I just wanted 11,000 gold, but I digress. Yeah. After yeah. countless trips to the recycling bin, yeah. we were on attempt 28. It was promising. We got him all the way to 10 augments. All I have Holy. to do now is administer the ultimate mutagen. What is the ultimate mutagen? <sighs> This is cum! It's basically a loot oh. box of chromosomes, because it gives him three random mutations. I crossed my fingers and performed the procedure. It was a success. Joey28 nice. officially had eight mutations, which gave him a total of 17 augments. According to my research, this is the maximum amount possible. Or maybe I just made that up, who knows? Regardless, <laughs> I think he's perfect. So ladies, like it or not, this is what the ideal male physique looks like. A badly mutated rat man with mammoth skin, diabetic neuropathy, propane sweat glands, and some kind of brain parasite. Have I broken gotcha. several international laws in the creation of this creature? Likely. Yes, but in the eyes of God, I am amongst him. Because Joey28 is the perfect organism. And he's arrived <laughs> just in time, because it is officially Reggie the end of the world. God. The wild hunt has been that would be the end of the world. <laughs> begun, and the wood elves have decided the best way to protect the environment is through homicide. Two sets of wood elf armies spawned at the enchanted forests in my territory. They look pretty formidable, but I know a thing or two about wood elves. You have to avoid fighting them on their home turf. In fact, fighting wood elves is a lot like fighting children. You can't just rush into the kindergarten winging haymakers. It's not tactical, it lacks nuance. In my experience, you'll find a lot more success luring them into the parking lot where you can ambush them with your friends. So that's exactly- <laughs> What are you getting Grim Cleeper into, Reggie? What? <laughs> what did you guys go and do? I'm scared now. <laughs> that good as amount of kid walking in a parking lot right about now. Exactly what we did to the wood elves. I had a few armies wait for them to leave the forests, at which point we cleaned them up in a nice open field where they couldn't pull too many of their tricks. This whole wild hunt thing isn't so bad, I thought out loud. Well, imagine my surprise when, on the next turn, I found a conga line of war oh criminals making their way into God. my territory. Yeah, that's like 10 armies, with more being that's pumped out the from these wild forests hunt? every turn. I mobilized my oh. forces, but in the meantime, the wood elves were destroying pretty much everything south of this line. I don't know Jesus. what fascist dictator is responsible for this, but I really don't like this version of the Wood Elves. Fortunately, the Old World has a high concentration of castles, which slowed them down, and after a few turns, my armies began sweeping through the war-torn regions. I was engaging them in two to three battles per turn, and Throt was doing fine, but my weaker armies were being devoured alive by the Feral Elves. Thankfully, I did some experimenting and found that the Wood Elves are surprisingly vulnerable to having a cask of acid smashed over their head, and that's very good mm, news for us. Surprising. I had my armies outfitted with some of these mortar teams, and we started making making some real progress. Additionally, I Very had some nice. allies in the area that were able to defend the Eastern Front. This was quite helpful, but perhaps the biggest break was this random event. It increased our chances of ambushing the elves, which allows Ooh. us to position our armies Plus like 50%. this, and their Pretty army good. assumes the position of a man who is about to receive a violent prostate exam. All I can say <laughs> is that this was an extremely cathartic experience. From here, my military philosophy is as follows. I have 60,000 gold, and I'm guessing the wood elves do not, because upon reviewing their economic infrastructure, I found only mud huts and strange men tweaking on crystal meth. Therefore, I don't believe they can keep up this pace, so I'm going to enter gotcha. a financial deficit to field just enough armies to gradually grind our enemies to dust under the assumption that they won't be able to replenish their ranks. Over the next 10 turns, I managed to slowly claw back my territory from the elves. I even nice. had time to quell a rebellion from Krakronid of the Black Chasm. Who is Krakronid of the Black Chasm? Only the finest collector of level 1 archers in the entire world. <laughs> and 
<laughs> no, Krakonid, no, how can you and do this, this? I had to congratulate him on personally. By this point, we've unified oh our eastern, God. western, and central fronts, effectively pushing the Wood Elves back to this choke point. Around this time, my allies declared war on Vlad von Karstein and asked me for help. Confused and clearly busy, I said no. In hindsight, this was the wrong response, because apparently it was a social faux pas on par with pouring lubricant on a wheelchair ramp. Within two turns, the entire Damn. world was so disgusted by my actions that 17 different <laughs> people cancelled their trade deals with me, including oh, Vlad, no. costing me thousands of gold per turn. Furthermore, a couple others just outright declared war on me. So needless to say, we're on our own from here. With Yikes. our armies now unified, we pushed through at Helmgart and even repelled 1800 elves on the next turn. After this victory, the Wood Elves attempted to call time out by issuing a press release that the Wild Hunt was over. Sorry guys, I'm afraid that's not how this no. works, because my Wild Hunt is just beginning. Briefly regrouping at Paravon, I took stock of the situation. We have five armies. Throt, specializing in giant monsters. Snickich, with assassins. Bok Bok and Ixstone are bringing in the siege weapons. And finally, Bilefitch has every known flavor of rat ogre. Rat ogres with flamethrowers, tasers, gatling guns, and even rat ogres covered in sheet metal. Comparatively, the elves don't have as much, but they are in the forest, and fighting a wood elf in the forest is like fighting Not an Italian good. in a spaghetti factory. Thousands of years what? of evolution have rendered them perfectly <laughs> optimized for combat in that environment, so they're still yeah. fairly dangerous. The first battle was against Durthu at Waterfall Palace. I stormed the field with my monsters, and the elves adopted this strategy of shooting us from behind a wall, which was smart until the wall broke. I can guarantee you they weren't feeling so smart then. Meanwhile, Durthu was waiting alone at the top of the mountain as if he was expecting a fair and honest duel with Throth. Instead, I had four assassins stab him to death. The first battle Yikes. was behind us, and it really sucks fighting in this environment, so I took a great satisfaction in auto-resolving my way to the final forest. It's being guarded by Orion and a few others, but at this point, we have the momentum, we have the numbers, and most importantly, we have Joey. We gave these drug-addled freaks the beating that their parents should have given them 30 years ago. I mean, we really put a pound in on their ass. Gorich, Joey, Throt, it's going to take the wood- Reggie really likes using this image, doesn't he? <laughs> I mean, I can't blame him. It's, it's pretty good for memes, but like, damn, dude. <laughs> Wood Elves years just to learn how to walk again. And as I stood there in a burning forest surrounded by thousands of dead elves, I knew I had done the right thing because the wild hunt is finally over. Sure, it yes, cost you me 10,000 gold per turn and I'm at war with everyone from the triads to literal demons. But all Worth. of that pales in comparison to the fact I have killed all Europeans, become God, and saved the world. I really couldn't ask for a better legacy. And with that, I feel Throt has so achieved his goals and his purpose in life is complete. So that's it for this video. Feel free to check out the second channel where I'll be posting some of my extra content. Big thanks to this month's patrons for supporting the channel and finally thank you for watching. Another banger of video by Reggie. If you guys haven't already, go down to the description and give the original video a like and subscribe to his channel. Of course, you want to see more Warhammer stuff, click the playlist on the screen. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one.